Welcome to this short video on the embryology of the pancreas. In this video, you will learn how the pancreas develops from two distinct parts and merges into one, why the blood supply to the pancreas is the way it is, and then finally the ductal system, how does it essentially drain into the duodenum. So let's start with this particular image. So what we've got here is the embryo um, pretty early on in uh, fourth, fifth week, and we're, we're cutting the embryo in a, in a sagittal section, and we're looking in here. So here's the head end, here's the tail end. What we're demonstrating here is this bleak, big blue tube, and this is essentially the gut tube. And we're, you can see it start right at the mouth end and end in at the cloaca end, and the gut tube is broken into three main parts, the foregut, the midgut, and the hindgut. I've done separate videos on that, so I do encourage you to watch those if you haven't already. Now, today we're gonna to focus in a specific part of the, of the foregut, which is gonna be essentially the stomach, the duodenum, and then the developing pancreas, which is the point of today. Now, before we get going, I just wanna illustrate a, an important structure that will demarcate the thorax to the abdomen. So coming from the neck, there's gonna be this type of tissue that's gonna go um, kind of loop around the developing heart, which is this red structure here, and come to lie just underneath the heart. And this is what we call the septum transversum. It's an important structure, and it's gonna be the precursor for at least one part of the diaphragm. Now, as it loops around the heart, it will supply or give a kind of a covering to the heart, which is gonna be the fibrous pericardium. And part of the reason, because this structure comes from the cervical region, and is dragging what we call the phrenic nerve with it. This is part of the reason why that part of the pericardium does have a innervation by the phrenic nerve. Now this structure will start to, to lie just under the heart and this is gonna be an important demarcation point of the digestive or the abdomen from the thorax. So what we're really focusing on is this section in here which is gonna be both the stomach and the duodenum developing. Now with this, what you can see at the back here, this is a big long red line. At this point of the embryo, this is known as the dorsal aorta, but essentially for today, it's gonna to develop into the abdominal aorta or up here, the thoracic aorta, but we're gonna focus in here. And the important vessel that's gonna supply this part of the gut tube is gonna be the celiac artery. So the celiac artery does supply the foregut, superior mesenteric does the midgut, and the inferior mesenteric does the hindgut, but we're gonna focus on the celiac artery for today. Now, zooming in at this section here, we go across to this diagram. So, just slightly up, here's the developing diaphragm here, which would be coming at this point here, and this part of the gut tube starts to widen out the back, okay? Also, just for completion, there's gonna be, uh, a mesentery at the back here, the dorsal mesentery, which bolts it to the back wall. So this is also an important structure because this will be part of the reason why a lot of the pancreas becomes a retroperitoneal. So this is an important piece of peritoneum or mesentery, dorsal mesentery, which is gonna be important because what's gonna develop in that, and I'll, I'll just draw it now, is in the, in the kind of, the folds of this peritoneum is gonna be the spleen developing, okay? Now move, move slightly down distally from the stomach and what you can see is uh, an outpouching or a diverticular starting to occur. So at least on the ventral portion, so this is the front portion here, we've got an outpouching here which is going to be for the liver. So this is for liver um, primordial kind of cells and it's going to start to grow up towards the septum transversum. So we have a what we call a ventral diverticular and out the back with this red pouch is the dorsal diverticular. So you have them all, these diverticular, one ventrally, one dorsally, almost at the same point. Now this becomes an important point. So this point here is really important because this is probably the demarcation point from the uh, foregut into the midgut. So why this is important? Well, pr pretty much you're safe to assume that all these structures we're about to draw will be supplied by the celiac artery, whereas everything below that will be from the superior mesenteric artery. And this is gonna be important because a touch of the pancreas 
will be supplied by the superior mesentery artery. Okay, so what's happening here is we've got an out pouch here in the dorsal mesentery, which is going to be called the dorsal pancreas. It's starting to pouch out, which still has in the communication with the duodenum. This is going to be the duodenum. So there will be still a ductal system being drained into the, door, into the duodenum, should I say. But going out the ventral portion, we're going to have this kind of hepatic system starting to take place. Now, a whole number of different cells are going to be differentiating here, like mesenchymal cells, Kufta cells, hepatocytes, and so forth. But I'm just going to focus on the ductal system. So I'll get rid of all this kind of tissue because we're not focusing on developing the liver. But what we're just going to focus on is the ductal system. So what happens here in this liver diverticular is we're going to have further diverticular starting to branch. So out here in the most distal parts is we're going to have two kind of hepatic ducts starting to form like that, which is going to be draining the, the whole liver from a bile point of view. And then popping out here is going to be a diverticular for the gallbladder like so. And then just popping just here is what we're going to call the ventral pancreas like so. And as time progresses, these structures become more defined. At the same time, at the back wall, this dorsal pancreas will just start to get bigger and bigger and become kind of longer as we know the pancreas does. It still has this nice long ductal system. And probably the way that this will form is because this is still all mesentery, okay, this is all going to the back wall of the abdomen at the back, we're probably going to have the spleen starting to develop in there like so. Okay, now as the back wall of the stomach gets bigger and bigger, now again, if you haven't done, looked at the embryology of the stomach, either in my video on the foregut, please go and watch it all. There's actually a video just on the stomach. So also please review that. So the stomach will start to pouch out bigger at the back, which means the stomach itself will start to develop differently. So this will give you essentially the greater curvature of the stomach, which will kind of form in like so. And the way that this will go is kind of into the lesser curvature and then we go up into the esophagus, right? Now, the, when this kind of, the stomach itself swings around, and as it swings around, it's going to bring the pan, this part of the pancreas around with it. So I'm just going to remove this, but essentially what will happen is this part of the pancreas comes behind, and then will sit kind of in this place here. Okay? Now, what that will mean I'll just clear that up, is that we have these two parts of the pancreas start to merge. Now coming through here will still be the pancreatic duct. So that's, sorry, the bile duct coming around like this. So we've still got the hepatic ducts right and left. We've still got the gallbladder developing like so. So this is going to come in like so into the cystic duct. But where the two hepatics, which will give you the common hepatic with the cystic duct, and together that's going to give you the common bile duct, which will go behind the pan sorry, behind the duodenum. So the duodenum is going to be here in front of it, but you can see it going behind. And this is going to come around like this, which still allows it to dump into the major duodenal papillae. So that's important. Now, this obviously has its ductal system going into it. But this main pancreatic duct has to kind of anastomose with it. So it comes down and joins it. And that what that means is the majority of the dorsal pancreas will then join the ventral pancreas together with the bile duct, common or the common bile duct to come in. And then all these secretions, so in this case, this would be exocrine secretion from the pancreas. So all those digestive enzymes with the bile will then get shot out of the major pancreatic, it's all the major duodenal papillae. Now there will be probably, in most cases, a continuation of a ductal system higher up. 
and that's going to be the accessory duct which will still give you us an opening there which will be the minor duodenal pili and that's probably going to be more bicarbonate so what that will actually do as chyme comes out of the stomach which is very acidic the first part of the pancreas is probably going to give you some secretions which will neutralize it and then the rest of it will come a bit lower down with a combination of the um, the bile duct with the main pancreatic duct which has both the um, the ventral pancreas derivative and the bigger dorsal pancreas derivative with it. Now the majority of this, the way that it all rotates is the majority of this will go to the back wall and then it will become uh, surrounded over the top with um, mesentery which makes it uh, retroperitoneal. It's only this tail portion of the pancreas with the spleen that comes back out and that's why they are intraperitoneal. Now in terms of the derivatives Probably the ventral gives you most of the ansonut process and a bit of the head, like so, or the pancreas, in, in, at least in the adult form. And then all the rest of it is coming from the dorsal pancreas. So why is that important? Well, in terms of the blood supply, remember we said celiac. So the vast majority, so the dorsal pancreas that, that was derived from embryologically from the dorsal pancreas, that's probably all going to be supplied by the splenic artery, which is a branch off the celiac artery that's going to come along and just supply it as it goes to the spleen, which makes sense. And it's all that's left is probably the head and the unsonant process. So this is where that kind of demarcation point's important. So as the gastro, also coming from the celiac artery, as the gastro, as gastro duodenal artery is coming down to supply the lower part of the stomach and the duodenum, it's going to give you a little branch called the superior pancreatic artery, which is going to give you the top part here, whilst the SMA, so the superior mesenteric artery, which is coming up from below, it's going to have an inferior uh, pancreatic duodenal branch, which is going to supply probably that back point portion here of the Utsunut process, which was probably a derivative from the ventral pancreas. And that's why you have this um, blood supply to the pancreas in the way it does, is because they derive from different structures. In terms of some uh, abnormalities that could form with the, uh, the pancreas development, the pancreas actually could develop around the whole duodenum in, in a kind of a, like a circle, and that could be called an annular uh, pancreas which can kind of constrict the duodenum or it could go into different parts like the liver, lung and other parts of the gastrointestinal tract due to the way it was um, derived and the way it then moved. Um, I think we've really covered the main parts so hopefully what you've seen from this is the pancreas has developed in two parts a ventral part and a dorsal part. The dorsal part is the majority and kind of grows into the spleen the majority of it will um, pr produce the pancreatic duct, which as the ventral portion comes around, it will meet it and that will anastomose, which will give you that common ductal system with the bile duct and empty into the major duodenal uh, papilla. Whereas the continuation of the accessory is probably going to empty into the minor duodenal papilla. And the blood supply mostly comes from the celiac artery from two branches being the splenic and then the a branch off the um, gastroduodenal duodenal, and a little bit coming from the SMA because probably the ventral portion came out of the duodenum slightly below that demarcation point of foregut and midgut.